a summer's afternoon. Fine enough to draw a crowd to the seaside for a brush with the salt air and the long, cold waves and the furrowed, dimpled sands. Always a wonder. And the boats. But first, over the hill. Over the hill from Sutton to Hoth. Hoth Hill. A tram will take us there. The Hoth tram. This is a ghost. They took up the lines a few years ago, and the tram will never make this journey again. This is a memory of a summer's afternoon some years ago, and a ghost will take us over the hill to the sea. Tram's first days, when the lines were new and just put down, before the little green blinds on the windows had been faded by salt air and hot sun, and the brasses were new, the tram's companions were carriages and cabriolets, and horses stepping on cobbles. And then, it may be, the tram was an eagle of traffic, peremptory and gleaming. The ring of its warning bell, the clatter of its steel sides, the terror and admiration of all pedestrians left behind, gaping. Not much of an eagle now, but very humble and beautiful. Its springs become delicate and frail with time. Like an old lady she is, taking her time. Kindly, slow, deliberate, careful in all her movements, watching her step. An old lady can't be too careful. and warm as a penny in the pocket, and the sea still there. Just to sit quiet, 
watch and wait. And if the passengers wander too far, a bell will ring loud, but courteous, of course, to bring them back. One more stop. No hurry. An old friend. Now we go, dancing, quick and bumpy for the children, as they like it. Their patience about to be rewarded.
peace on the windy stalls and on all the bright holiday. Peace on the salt air. It pulled like the gentle pull of tide and water on dinghy and trawler. Like the tug an angler knows. Strong but delicate at the end of his line. And everyone felt better and happier for such a bright encounter. As the afternoon grew late and the time had come to go home, the tram, which had waited so patiently through the bright hours, stirred herself again for the long climb back. She rang a bell for them, and they came. Day trippers, holiday makers, up from the seashore, from the cobbled quayside, out from between the boats, up from the sand dunes, from the long grass, from the heather and the bell flowers and popping gorse on the marble cliffs. A bit tired, most of them. again for a minute, catching the late sun and the wind, strangers together on the top deck of an electric car. And hadn't it been a great outing for them? Doubtless the whole wide seafront was marked by traces of their visit. Cartons and blown paper, bent tins, tickets, bottles abandoned in victory in the long bright hours of peace and torn shreds of newspapers left flaunting themselves, pale and sad in every hollow, like banners after a raid. Well, a day trip is like that, everywhere.
was not yet over, and there was still space and light to find high above the sea. first days, when the lines were shining new and just put down, her springs resilient still, blithe as an athlete, alert for all declivities in her way, before she became delicate and frail with sea rust. In those first days, the tram's companions were open carriages, horse cabs, dog carts clattering on cobbles. And then, it may be, she was an eagle of traffic startling all poor horses as she sidled by with a ring of her warning bell, with the clangor and stress of her wheels, the terror and admiration of all pedestrians left behind, gaping. much of an eagle now, but very humble and dutiful. The last journey nearly done. Bright day, nearly done. Sweet lady, good night.